It all started when he burned down his parents' house at the age of five. He bounced around from institution to institution, even having electroshock therapy done on him at the age of eight. He ended up in this facility when no one else would take him in. Once he was released, he went on a rampaging murder spree and killed over nine people. Now, we'll explore the place where he wandered as a young child and even an adult. Today, we're inside an abandoned prison, and this place opened up in 1931. The history here is dark, depressing, but this place wasn't only a prison, it was also a state school for boys. So at one point we had children here, then it transitioned into a men's prison, and now it's abandoned. We're gonna take you around, explore the whole thing, so stay tuned, make sure you like, subscribe, and let's explore more. And I just was walking down this dark hallway, and this is really the first room I found. This is the weight room here, and I'm really surprised to see there's actually like a squat rack left. Pretty crazy, it's all rusted. It's been here for a while. But weird to think that this is where the prisoners were actually working out, lifting weights every day. You know, not much else to do in a place like this. And I saw this over here. Not really sure what all this means. Probably rules of the weight room. And now we have this like multi-functioning piece of equipment here. Had a bunch of different stuff on, had like a pull-up bar, all these different things. You can see the weight stacks. This is weird, really weird to be in this place, especially like a gym instead of a prison. You know, a lot of civilians don't get to see stuff like this, so for me right now, this just feels like a different world. It feels like I'm really not supposed to be here. Well, I'm really not supposed to be here, but either way. Looks like a crazy uh, metal death trap, but I thought this seat was pretty cool. It's like a little shiny seat. Someone probably pushed their legs on this. So I just found this. This is in the back of the weight room. And this has all these people's names all over it. Now, I don't know if these were the prisoners themselves. I think they were. I think they were. See, this is lawn and grounds. And it has a person's name and their number. So I think the prisoners here were actually doing work. And they were working on uh, maintaining the property as well. So it's cool to see this a leftover from the past. You know, this pe person's name just written on this piece of paper. You know, I wonder where they are now. I wonder what they're doing. They have no idea I'm like holding this, reading their name. But definitely a strange feeling. And here was the desk, so I'm assuming the correctional officer probably sat here and he watched everybody as they worked out, made sure uh, nothing went down. Nothing crazy at least. And look over here guys, they even have this leg press machine. Look at this thing, it's a rust bucket now. But this is where a prisoner would sit. He put his legs on this platform and push this up and put weights on it. Pretty crazy. And here's another form of a leg machine. Looks like this is for the hamstrings. Put your legs in here and lift this up. Oh, there's even some weights on it still. Look at that. Look at that. Still on here. Wow. Just found this domino on the ground. For me, this is proof, this is evidence that there was prisoners here. And I think the room in front of me was an area where if they didn't want to work out, they can come in here and play dominoes or cards with their friends or whoever. It's so weird that there was so much energy, so much life in this place, and now it's just me and the muse. So just think about that. You don't get to see this every day, everyone. This is something you're only gonna see if you end up in jail. So stay in school, kids. So right now, I'm making my way down to the mess hall. This is where everybody would meet and eat lunch, breakfast, dinner. This was the mess hall. As you can see, there's no tables or anything left. But if you've seen any movies, you kind of have the idea how the tables were all sprawled out in here. This was where they would hang all the utensils in here. And they're outlined so they would know if they're back and they're in their correct spot. If something's missing, it could be used as a weapon. So they had to make sure all this stuff was back every single day. I was just down here checking out the utility room. It's pretty cool, not much in here. But I found a flare. This 30 minute emergency flare. It's still good, not even opened. We're at level H3. 
So right now, we are walking down one of the wards. It was modeled for boys at first, and then they just used the same model for the prisoners. Pretty intense just to walk through here knowing, you know, some serial killers walk through here in the same place I'm walking now. You can see, like, here is some sort of sunroom. Very classic, definitely not a normal prison vibe, but it's like a mix of a mental hospital and a prison, which makes perfect sense based off the history here. But it is really beautiful. You can see, as you can see, that this door has different panels. The other one for wood. You can hear this. This is more like what I thought would be here, like metal paneling. But it's weird, only some of them have it. I don't know why. Look at these floors. Very asylum-esque floors. Here's the men's room. Look at these floors again with these like asylum floors. And look what we have here. Wow. This is kind of weird. A toothbrush left over. Just hanging out there. We just came down the hallway. Enter this massive room. Looks like there's a lot of stuff left here. A lot of ovens and like kitchen appliances. But I'm gonna go through and uh, see what all this stuff is doing here. Washers, dryers, fridges. And I wasn't expecting this. Look, even ovens. Yeah, nothing in there, just like I expected. They even have this prescription refill box. So these prisoners can get more medicine when they need it. The room we were just in was for visitors. So this is where the visitors would come in and they would read this. This right here was the path the visitors would take. They'd come in here and enter into this uh, visiting room and they'd meet with their friends or family who were in here. And now it's silent. That's just the one thing that always gets me. The silence in these places. It used to be filled with life. Who knows, they're probably screaming, yelling, fighting. And now it's just empty, quiet. The mural's really cool though, I'm not gonna lie. Really classy, didn't expect to see that in here. And another ward. Here we got one of the first rooms. This one's labeled one, two, three. Looks like a pretty big room. But the thing that struck me was this bed that's here. Looks like it might have been part of like bunk beds or something. Let's see what's in this room. These rooms are very strange. It's hard to get the vibe from them. Like this one. Definitely has the fenced in windows, the cages on the, on the back. So no one could bust out as you guys can see. We are in another day room right now. And this one's cool because it has a TV in here. First TV I've seen in here. But it gives you an idea of what this was kind of set up like. TV would sit there. Probably some chairs and tables. They could come in here and hang out. Watch some TV when they had free time. More rooms this way. And I'm saying rooms, but I really mean it's like their cells, technically. It's just they don't have that normal cell vibe. But I'm gonna go check them out. I'm curious if there'll be any more beds. I'm just loving the look of this hallway. Let's pop right in here, let's just see. Oh, these ones look way smaller. It's so weird how the rooms, they differ in size. And yeah, this one just has like one little small hole to look out of. And it's definitely way smaller than the others. And here we are, this is this, Ward's bathroom. And what I thought was weird was I wonder what this is. Behind this door is just a normal bathroom. Full and empty. Slides back and forth. I don't understand what that is. This bathroom is really weird. Definitely doesn't look like it's supposed to be meant for like full grown men. And then when we come into the shower section, you can see we have the two showers, two shower heads here, so. You know what they say, don't drop the soap. It's weird to just be in this place, just knowing the history and knowing who was here. Now there's a famous 
serial killer who was locked up in here. And he was here from when it was a training school, from when it was a prison. He was here for all this stuff. And he actually killed nine people. And he was in this place where we are now. So just thinking that we could be walking in the same steps as this person, it's incredible. And, you know, who knows? He could have been locked up right here in this room. We just got up to the third floor. And these rooms look way smaller than all the rest. And same with the hallways and everything. I can really see this area being for the training school, being for younger boys to stay here and live here. And part of the interesting history of this place was that Eleanor Roosevelt came here. When she came here, she was appalled at the conditions these boys were living in. So it just goes to show you, you know, someone like that comes along and it can just really change everything. But who knows really what it did, because once these doors are closed, you know, no one sees what happens. So I found this little section here, up on the top. And this was the only section like this in the whole place. Looks like this ward area had its own little kitchen. This place is so weird, so mysterious. I wish I could take a time machine and just come back here, back in the day and really see what was going on here. Here is the section we're in, it's called H2. And wouldn't you know it, another long hallway full of patient wards. Don't, don't touch me with that hat. Don't move and put your hands up. Bando hide and go see. We're tagged. I'll be doing better with that. This is me if I wanna do some dust in, you know, clean the bando up and it all. Dust in, dust off the lights. So we're in another section. This is like a weird section, open up into like two bigger rooms. We have some random rooms over here that are super tiny. And then right where Urbex Muse is, we have a bunch of these like cubicle looking things. Not really sure what these are, but uh, the room is definitely cool. I like the fact that it opens up so much. That's where we just came from. And won't you know it, another long hallway. These hallways are just filled with rooms. The rooms are really empty, but you still get that idea, that feeling. You now, what it was like to be locked up, caged in. And it's not a good feeling. Especially if you were in the training school. I mean, there was young kids here. And this building just doesn't seem very friendly or inviting. All right, everybody, we're gonna end the video right here. Urbex, Mix, and I just explored this entire place. This prison opened in 1931. We're here 90 years later exploring. Incredible vibe, incredible architecture, incredible decay, but we gotta head out of here. On to the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and always get out and explore more.